Yellowstone supervolcano latest quake swarms. What is causing this quake swarms? What is the difference between seismic activity and quake swarms? This is the latest from Caldera Chronicles out today, November 11. The weekly col column written by scientists and collaborators of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. And this week's contribution is from David Shelley, seismologist at the U.S. Geological Survey. Yellowstone, like many regions with hydrothermal activity, often exhibits earthquake swarms. But how do we define an earthquake swarm and distinguish it from other seismic activity? And what is the cause of such swarms? Before we answer these questions, let's take a small step back. Many earthquakes follow a non-swarm pattern known as main shock aftershock sequence. In its simplest form, this means that the largest earthquake occurs first in the sequence, followed by a series of small shocks, decaying over a time period ranging from weeks to decades. On average, the magnitude of the largest aftershock tends to be about one magnitude unit smaller than the main shock. However, not all earthquake sequences follow this pattern. Sometimes the largest event might not be the first event in the sequence, instead it might occur in the middle. Sometimes sequences can have many earthquakes with magnitudes similar to the largest earthquakes of the sequence. Sometimes sequences don't decay over time, but rather remain steady or even increase in their activity rates over periods of days, weeks, or even months. Sequences that don't fit a main shock aftershock pattern are typically considered swarms. There's no precise definition of when a main shock aftershock sequence becomes a swarm. In reality, the distinction is not sharp. Earthquake sequences follow a whole range of behaviors from very main shock aftershock to very unlike main shock after shock. The swarm designation is typically applied when we observe relatively many earthquakes within a relatively small area, which just don't fit the pattern of a main shock after shock sequence. Now for the second, more important question, what physically causes seismic sequences to behave as swarms rather than main shock after shock sequences? And we've recently seen many of those in the Maple Creek earthquake swarms that we have northeast of the caldera in Yellowstone. Now, this question is still a subject of active research, both at Yellowstone and elsewhere, as it gets to the heart of our goal of understanding active processes deep in the subsurface. Based on past research, we understand that swarms probably indicate that an extra ingredient, quote-unquote, is involved where the earthquakes are happening. An ingredient that is not as prevalent as main shock after shock sequences. Sometimes this ingredient might be that a fault is slipping slowly and small sticky patches are popping off and generating numerous small earthquakes. Sometimes magma might be pushing up into the crust opening up a pathway for itself by breaking the rock in front of it. But most often, swarms are probably caused by fluids, dominantly water, interacting with faults. Unlike magma, which requires a relatively wide pathway to avoid freezing into solid rock, water can move within the subsurface through small cracks. Although this process is incredibly slow in most intact rocks, it speeds up dramatically when larger cracks are present. How do we get larger cracks deep in the Earth's subsurface? Why earthquakes, of course. Right after slipping in an earthquake, a fault tends to be much more permeable than when it started slipping. At the same time, fluids within faults, especially at high pressures, can reduce the effective clamping force on a fault, causing it to slip. Thus, we have a potential for a positive feedback loop where earthquakes allow fluids to diffuse, which in turn generates more earthquakes. We sometimes see evidence of this process in earthquake locations that begin in a concentrated area of a fault and expand dramatically outward with time. 
The caveat is that this only happens if the faults are already quite close to failure. This is often true in active tectonic areas like Yellowstone, but swarms will die out as soon as they encounter areas where faults are less stressed. We still have much to learn about earthquake swarms and their underlying physical processes, although we also have understanding of deep water source in a place like Yellowstone, water and gases are expected to be slowly released from underlying magma as it cools and crystallizes. The larger scale water pathways ultimately connecting from relatively deep magma storage to the surface remain largely unknown. We also don't fully understand the fluid chemical dynamics during earthquake swarms. One intriguing possibility is that swarms could sometimes be given an extra kick by gas bubbles that may form within faults during the earthquakes. Similar to shaking a Coke bottle, these bubbles could ultimately increase the overall fluid pressure at depths and trigger more earthquakes. Answering these questions will require continued commitment to detailed geophysical and geochemical observations at Yellowstone and elsewhere, combined with carefully laboratory, carefully laboratory and computer modeling studies. And we can't wait to learn more. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.